at Lore School? Well, I'm gonna, first I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna play for you, because I like to do that. And then I'm gonna tell you about our curriculum and why we chose a quaver and all the amazing things it does. Then I'm gonna show you some of our instruments we do and some of the techniques I do with teaching that, and then any questions you have. So, without further ado. <laughs> in Texas State right now, and then I have twins that are first grade, and then I have a little one who's in pre-K. Um, I started my, I'm from Nebraska, I went to the University of Kansas to get my, my bachelor's of music in percussion performance. Then I went on to Rice to get my master's of music, that's what got me down here, in percussion performance, with the intent to be in the Houston Symphony. While at Rice, I had to be in a practice room for about eight hours a day, and I learned that I did not like tiny little walls and not being with people. Um, my grandpa was a pastor, for umpteen years and the grandpas before him were pastors. So I went into the church field. I was the assistant director of music at a church up in spring. And then after that, I went to be the director of music at a Methodist church up in the woodlands. Um, my wife and I discussed that she didn't like me working almost every day except Saturday. And so we, I kind of got in the teaching field that way. Um, a buddy of mine was the band director of sorts at a school in Aldine. And so he got me a really cool job for one year to kind of party with him on his retirement year. And then I got this job. And so I've been here five years um, and having a whole, whole, whole lot of fun doing it. So that's me. Quaver music. Wait, well, here, let me tell you the goals of our music program. The goals are to instill love of music from an early age, to build, build confidence in their self, to allow for exploration of music and the arts, and to learn an instrument. So quaver, we've used Quaver music, this is my fifth year. The first two years we just kind of beta tested it. We used it for free, we kind of tried it out. It's actually the number one music curriculum in all, in all the world. Um, one reason I like is it, is it really builds upon itself and it also is kind of Disney-like. And so there's this fun element about it. The guy who runs it, his name is uh, Graham. I've actually met him at a conference. He's this tiny little British guy. He's very quirky and weird. I'm kind of quirky and weird. So we actually work pretty well. <laughs> So it starts off, um, I was going to show you a video, but we'll start here first. So the cool thing is it's, this is how the curriculum works. So it looks like this. So every, so I teach first grade, but it starts in kinder. This one also uses a little bit. And so every, and we have three lessons. There's 36 lessons total. I teach your kids 70 times. So we, we allow for half of it to be taught by quaver and the other half to be an instrument or what we're kind of dividing out. So like the first three lessons, we have beat. So I'm gonna show you what's inside of each of these lessons, but 
there's three lessons every time, and at the end of the third lesson, we test them to see if they're like if, if I taught it right, if, if they if they've learned everything. And so as we go on, you know, we have voice for this. We learn about the lines and spaces, um, and it goes on. And then we have a huge end review. Um, so that so this is first grade. Second grade, we kind of get beaten the same thing, but then we start moving to meter, more advanced rhythms. We get to learn more about more composers and in the periods of music. And then when we get to third grade, then we move to rhythm because we've already learned beats. That's very basic. Then we've already learned meter, so that it, it incorporates it all. Um, and it just kind of keeps going on. Then we get to learn about a new period. This, this will refresh back at the rope we just learned and then give us the classical. Um, it's all very well thought out. And the cool thing is, and then this is, they start recorders in third grade, so that's why we start recorders in third grade. Um, and then fourth grade gets more and more complex. The fourth graders use fifth and fourth grade, so we, they get really, they get into meter of six, eight, which normally you wouldn't touch until high school. Um, but here I wanted to show you kind of how each lesson works. So they've given us, there's over a thousand songs in here that we can use, but they've also given us an outline of here's, here's a set lesson and you can kind of edit in how you want, but here's how, what we would suggest for a set lesson. And they also say uh, the TEKS, which is the Texas Educational Music Standard, um, it crosses all those off. So at the end, there's a teacher section where it says, well, today you hit 5.1 and you hit 1.2, and that's all my Atlas curriculum if you're interested in looking, but it shows like today we've hit this and today we've hit this. By the end of the year, we've hit them all multiple times. Um, so it's very cool how it, how it, how it goes out. Um, when they, as Ms. Corbett was saying, when they come into music, I greet them every time. I greet them at the door with a hit fist bump or I flash weekly at a pinky high five. Um, and then they come into music from Classical Countdown to just kind of like settle their minds down, get them into, they're listening to it the whole time. I'm asking them questions about what's going on with the music. Um, last week we, I played Vivaldi and I had a second grader who came in and said, oh, that's Vivaldi, that's Spring from Vivaldi. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa how, how do you know that? He's like, well, Vivaldi was my favorite composer last year, and I haven't listened to him yet this year, but I really like that piece. And so then we were actually were learning about Vivaldi because we were doing the Baroque period in that second grade class. And he was like, oh, I could tell you all of them. And so literally we played it, and he was like, winter, summer. And I was like, I can't even do this. What are you doing? Like, it was crazy. So just cool. Like, and that's just a kid who loved classical countdown and just kind of took it. And he's, I would not call him a music scholar at all. I would never have thought. You probably would never have thought. So it's really cool just to see how it hits people in different ways. I don't know if my touch is gonna work, but. Um, so this is their favorite song. My little Henry in pre-K does this song. They all love this song, I just have to show you because it's super cute. They might start singing it if they walk by. <laughs> Some are animated, some are a little bit sillier than that. Some just have the words with it. And what's cool is they've taken like they've taken that song, then they also have the words on a different kind of a song. And then they have an activity with that kind of song. And then they have so they've rolled this whole out. And like I said, it starts with pre-K. So pre-K has like like Miss Ben also played this roulette game they had on there where it said, we're, we're gonna keep the beat to this song on our knees, and then we're gonna keep it on our head, and then we're gonna keep it on our shoulders. So they've really rolled it out, and it's kind of cartoon style, and it's really catchy. Um, and so I, what I really want to show you here is, so then it goes, what has a steady beat? So then we say, does thunder have a steady beat? No. Does it clock? Yes, it does. So we go through that. 
Then we find our heartbeat, which is usually hard in first grade. But we try our best. Beat is the heartbeat of music. That's, that's the core thing that they want you to know that's going to be on the test. Then we watch what kids are calling a movie. So I just want to show you a little bit of this. It's kind of like a Disney episode, I call it. They watch this in first, and then they'll watch it again in second, and then sometimes in third they'll watch it if they really want to watch it. At, in my class, um, we have a chart on the wall that says 15 at the top, and if they have 15 good classes, then they get a party. If they had, so I move it up every time. What's, when we recap at the end of the lesson, I say, how were we today? Stinky, so they could be stinky, okay, good, very good, or excellent. If they're excellent, they get to move up two spaces. I've only had a few excellent classes so far. Um, I've had quite a few stinky classes. They can never move down, they can always stay where they're at, but they can't move up unless they're good. Also, if they're walking to, from music class, that still counts as class. So if they were excellent and then they walk stinky, they're down to good. Um, and they know that, and they're like, oh, I just moved down, like we're, we're so close. But they can see every other class up there. So there's all my classes up there, and they're like, how, how, why are they up there? They have a party already. A party doesn't involve food, a party is something musical. We'll do a talent show, we'll do, uh, uh, we've done a music video, we've done karaoke, we've done dance party, we'll watch an extra quaver video. It's something music related, and they're all excited, and then they have to start over again. So, um, but it's really cool. So they, this is one of the this is one of the best videos they have. Uh, it's 15 minutes long. I'm not going to show it all, but I just want to show you kind of how quirky he is and what really catches the attention. And what's cool is after this, there's a quiz that they have to do, and every time it's aced. And if I were to take the quiz, they watched this the first week of school. If I were to do the quiz now, I bet it would be aced again because they're retaining all that knowledge that I could probably could not teach as well as, as what this does. So this is the movie that they are watching. <laughs> this with my two friends. This is John. John, give me five. And this is Sue. Come over here, Sue. Don't be worried. Nothing to be worried about, my friends. Now, you've got these heartbeat monitors on, and we're going to look at your heartbeat up on those two monitors. Here we go. Follow me. This is your heartbeat. It's official. You're alive. And Sue, this is your heartbeat. You're alive as well. Isn't that really? Good. Now, I'm going to play a piece of music that goes along with your heartbeat. Quick, to the piano! Here is a piece of music that goes with your heartbeat. As your heart has a beat, so does music. Heart has a beat, so does music. Heart has a beat, so does music. Heart beat music. Now just as your heart moves blood along through your body, beat moves the music along. Now, John, I am going to speed up your heartbeat by running on my chase machine. Now, come here. These are the things that you can choose to be chased by. Volcano, tide away, ball, tornado. <laughs> Dad, bees, pirate, cheetah, ninja, snake, hippo, bear, ostrich, or lion. Which one do you want? Bear. Good choice, my friend. Come around the stand of my chase machine. Here we go. On your marks, get set, John, run for your life. It's ah! so, this way. Okay, I want you to imagine you're in Hawaii on the beach, relaxing, 
there's sun, there's sand, there's ice cream. I want you to lie on the hammock and relax. Off you go. And I should give you this little teddy bear. Could you, could you, could I want you just to rest and I'll be back in a minute. John, quick! It's your day! <laughs> of music just like your heartbeat is the beat of your body and now we know that if you speed up the beat you speed up the music if you slow down the beat you slow down the music quick to the phone box not only can you speed up and slow down the beat of music but you can feel the beat of music especially when the music <laughs> is really loud you can feel the beat in your heart Sometimes, throughout your whole body, B is what makes you want to dance! When a conductor conducts, she's not just waving her arms about, but she's keeping a steady beat for the orchestra to follow. That's why they all look at her. They follow her beat. If you didn't keep a steady beat, everything could just fall apart. Oh, you have to see that part. Now, Sue, let's go over to the beat jar. Now, look. When you look in the beat jar, what do you see? Some bounce higher than others. Exactly right. Some bounce higher than others because there are strong beats and weak beats. I am a weak beat. I am a strong beat. How? <laughs> Beats are organized in a measure. That's a key buzzword. Then we do a lot of strong and weak, especially with the little ones. And so this is a meter of two, so it goes strong, weak. And then we walk around. You missed. There's one where uh, I played poor wet, dry, uh, quick drying cement in, in a guy's foot, and his name's Frank, and he has a bucket on his foot and then a knot bucket, and so he walks around strong, weak. And so we walk around the room like that. We get a little bit silly with this. Um, then it has the quiz. So this is the fun interactive, and now that I have a Promethean, everybody can come up and, and do this. So the you know first and second graders will, who are just starting to read, will read with them. But then somebody will come up and they'll pick. Beat is the heartbeat of music, just like your heartbeat is the beat of you. So then it has ten questions of that. And it replays the video every time, in case you didn't know. And then this is how we kind of end the class. Is we, I have somebody, okay, we learned what measure was, what is measure? So that kind of defines that. Um, recall the definitions, names, so that's just a special beat. And then if I wanted to, I could go on, and there's even more that they've given me to even go further beyond. And we learn the keywords that we know. This is what we learned this week of steady beat. Um, and then we find the beat again, so then what would the beat do this? And then what, what is, then later we're gonna learn what the meter of is. Is it a two, is it a three, is it a four? Where's the strong and the weak beat? Um, in first grade yesterday I had 
a middle school student who's playing for Carnegie Hall and they wanted to play for an audience, so I had them play for my first grade class. And I, there were three kids that were in there going, what is this in? Like literally just, I had, I told them not to do anything. I just said, listen, and literally they're like, one, two, I wonder what this is in, like the whole time. So it's just so cool to see that it's working. Um, then we'll play percussion instruments every time. Uh, this is another fun game where it's like an Star if they get right. Um, another test just to get the beat in. All right. So that's and that's just one lesson. So then that's I've got 36 of those lessons. So then it, and it builds upon each other. So if I if I went then I'm not going to go through it all. But if we went through second grade then they have steady beat as well. And then we get to sing kind of a more fun song. We see these slides again. We do we watch the same video and the same quiz. Um, but then we do a lot more. So here, this is, she'll be coming around the mountain. This game is, they love this game. Um, they have to find the beat, and which one's keeping the beat, and which one's not keeping the beat, to, to the music. So then they pick the right guy, or the wrong guy. Um, so again, it's just kind of Disney-like, and kind of fun, and very engaging, and, and they're gonna remember it um, the whole time. So, uh, yeah, what else do I wanna do quick? So, then I want to get into what I do next. Uh, so, Poiver, as I said, I teach an average of 70 classes to students. Fourth grade, I see two half hour classes. So, I, I still I see them 35 times. So, I still count that as 70. The first time we do, the first half hour we do Poiver, the second half we do an instrument. In first grade, we do violins. That's not to become a maestro of the instrument, that's just to get another tool to learn rhythms on. And so, the way we start on violins is in guitar mode, and we hold it like this, and we learn how to kind of pluck with our finger. And then we learn how to push our fingers down, very just only these two fingers. And we just, I, I think second grade just started putting fingers down. Everybody else is still kind of plucking. And then we get into position. We have this crazy way to get a position. We say feet together. Then we say quack, out, flip, neck, nose picker, on. And that's how we get on to our thing every time. They could tell you this at home. For second graders could easily tell you. They'd be like, what's the nose picker thing again? I want to do it again. That's how it gets in position. They're in position. This is how we hold it for first grade. We don't hold it out here yet because they're, trust me, uh, we hold it right here. Um, I've only had a few falls so far. We don't start till November. Um, and then we just pluck. I have this great app called Smart Music, which is used by, um, I have the quarter up, right? So every, um, almost every band method out there, every instrumental method is on this app. I pay $40 a year and I have all the books in the world that I ever want to have, and then I, it tests me. So if I, this is what we do in class. So if I, I want them to play open D on plucking. enough. Um, but what's fun is then we, we actually have breakout groups. Um, I've done uh, all four instruments of the orchestra family, so everybody's in either the strings group or percussion or the woodwind or the brass, and so that's their little instrument family that they're in. And then so they compete against each other, and so we, we kind of tally up the points on who's, who's in the lead and who's not. We've just started doing that in first and second, but um, in third and fourth we have a lot of competitions with that on rhythms, on, on games like this uh, that really shows them I mean, you get to see if you miss a note, and you'll see on the, on the recorder one. So this is, that's what we do with violins. Um, we get to the bow later. The bow is, a, is another, it's almost as hard as holding the violin, so we get to that. Um, it's just kind of fun to see them play the violin. Uh, second grade we do, uh, my master's, as I said, is in percussion, so we do a huge percussion unit. I only brought some of my toys today, but we'll get them on the marimbos. We have tons of these orb xylophones. We've got so many drums. I didn't bring the frame drums. We've got a lot of drums. I'll, also, we'll do, um, We'll work on rhythms, and so I have this game where I'll, I'll, I'll put them in their instrument family groups, and I'll, and I'll go like this, and they have to clap it, so they have to go shh, ta, shh, ta. And depending on who gets it, I let them all four try. They're the first in the line, and then I tell you, oh, you're wrong. If you get to, if you get three in a row, then you get bonus points for your team, and then you go to the next line, and we go to the next slide. So they're actually playing that game next week in class as we work on rhythms. 
so second grade does more violin and a lot of percussion. Third grade is when they get their fancy recorder. Uh, they will get third grade, we're getting this in November. They will sound terrible until December. Um, <laughs> please come by the music room at any time in November and it will, you'll be like, why is he still living? Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is quite terrible. Um, we do recorders, we do the same thing. We, we work in this Recorder Express book, which is on this amazing site. Um, I'm actually considering, so I, I, we pay as a school, as I said, we pay $40 a year, but students, I can get a student pass for $3 a year. So I'm, I'm considering that, we still will buy the book, but I'm considering that because they can have this at home on their iPad and just practice and make sure they're hitting the notes. So the same, same thing as we did before. It's like if they're like, that's not right. Well, then we can actually listen to it and we can hear how they actually didn't hear it. And if I wanted to, I could say that and then send it home to you and show that they actually didn't hear it. Right. So the, cool, the way this is usually used is for like a band test. You then send that to your band director and, and then, then you get to do it from home and I don't have to do it at school anymore. Uh, we don't actually do that. I, I'm not testing them. This is just to learn an instrument. And I will tell you, by December and January when they learn hot cross buns for the first time, it is cool just to see their little light bulb ding go on. And then they're like wildfire. They're like, what else can I play? Show me something else, show me else, something else. And then we start recorder karate. So recorder karate is just like normal karate, you earn belts. And so this is Mr. Rose. He has reached master sensei level. Nope, he's missing it, but he should have. Um, and so the white belt is hot cross buns, the yellow belt, and they go on and on and up. And so there is a time, um, so we learn all the notes, we learn all the music, and then I kind of put it on them and say, here's all the recorder karate belts. We're gonna have recorder karate one day, and you're gonna come in one day or two days a month, and you're gonna come in in a line, and you're gonna play your song. Except it will sound like this. Yes, it will sound like that. I'll be like, ah, where's your thumb? Where's your finger position? Remember, we're holding the notes. Yeah. Usually the white belt I'll get, but, uh, no. um, but we've had some excellent students in the past. Uh, so then we go through brown belt is um, Ode to Joy, and then black belt is, is actually pretty difficult. Um, and they actually have blue and red ones now, so we don't use fancy tape. Um, and then there's double black belt. If they can play them all by memory, then they get double black belt. And they don't have to play them in a row, but they have to cross them off as we're going, and they, they learn it by memory, and it's so cool because they're like, you know, they're writing the notes in, and they're like, oh, I don't know how to do this, and they're cheating sometimes, like, like he doesn't see me, right, you know, it's so funny to watch. And then the third triple black belt is if you play it for somebody else, hopefully your parents, but if you can play it for somebody else, and then they have to tell me that you played it for them. And then if they get past that, there's Master Sensei, which is Yesu Joy of Man's Desire. I didn't practice it. No, I'm not gonna try. Uh, but if they play that, which is a hundred, a 204 notes, and they could play it just like this. And I did have um, Charlie and Camille Soleil, who are in eighth grade now, they played it that slow for me the first year we did this. And it was treacherous, but they made it. And they literally just had, they at, at that time, they came up with their own note system. This was not a G for them, this was three, and this was two, and this was one. And so they had their own little chicken scratch. However you're learning it, that's awesome. And hey, you probably couldn't play it now, but he had it all like literally on a page and he did it and he got Master Sensei. And then after that, for the then we have, I just make them play random notes and then they get star belts and it all looks glittery and fancy. Um, and no, these are not duct tape or electrical tape. They are magic belts. Because <laughs> I've had some come in and they're like, they have tape on them. I'm like, what is that? Uh, I got an orange belt. <laughs> then play it for them. <laughs> and these are all my other fancy recorders and I just want to bring them. We, we play along with him. This is my tiny little friend. His name is, uh, we call him Sopra Nino Nino. So he's kind of fun to play. Uh, so we have recorders. Uh, third grade really only gets through, their recorder karate just gets through like Orange Belt. We don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time on doing the karate part because they do that in fourth grade. So then in fourth grade, they'll start doing that here soon and they'll get all the way up and, and play all those fun belts. Um, and now we have, we used to give you one recorder and you had to bring it home and bring it to school and bring it in front of them. So now we actually give you one for home and we leave one at school because they only cost me a dollar. 
So that's much easier. We have less tears and less broken ones and all that. Uh, then in fourth grade, we get to play ukulele. Why did we start the ukulele? Well, quaver music starts in fifth grade, and so I said that'd be kind of cool. And then uh, two years ago in fourth grade, I had kind of a squirrely class, and they said, oh, we have to play the nerdy recorders in fourth grade? And I was like, they're not nerdy, they're so cool. And I was like, yeah, they kind of are nerdy. So what if we play the ukulele? And so we got the ukulele. Um, so quaver goes through this. So this is their favorite song of all time. So we learn all the open strings. A, a ukulele is different than a guitar because it doesn't go from low to high. It has a high note up here. And so it's called, my dog has fleas. Is what they say, everybody says, I don't know why. And that's how we tune it. So they learn how to tune. They learn, how, so this is an open strings practice song, but it gets them kind of out of order. Um, they love this. They're gonna dance in a second. Period, and then five times the next class period because it's like the best song ever. And every every open string has its own song that they're and they're really learning how to pluck. Um, we actually because they're they have dainty little thumbs. You're not supposed to use a pick, but we got them picks. There's little special felt ukulele picks. So now all the dainty ones have picks. Um, Mr. Rowe is not dainty, um, but it's a whole. So this this whole as as you saw here. So this is all a ukulele special thing. So it shows you how to play scale, we get into chords later. We don't do a whole lot of this, we just use their tools um, for that. What I do play is like Guitar Hero. This is called Musician. It's literally like Guitar Hero. And again, the mic picks them up. Oh. So they're learning how to play chords with this and then how to play together. Ain't nothing like playing the youth now. Playing the youth now. Playing the youth now. Ain't nothing like playing. So, so that's kind of the fun thing with that. It's really cool. Um, they have notes practice and they have this. And again, we do this within the groups of the instrument families. That is the ukulele. Is there anything else I need to show you? And then for the musicians out there, we play this amazing game. My mentor, uh, Mr. Schoen, who taught me when I was in my Aldine school, um, gave me these and said, this is like the best game you'll ever play. And with piano students, it's the best game I've ever heard of. And so I will just hold this up and, I, and so we'll, have, we'll play, what's, this is called Cabbage, and we'll play the game just like we had with the rhythm. And I'll say, what is this word? And so you have to know that the, letter, the spaces spell it F-A-C-E so that this word is ace. And so basically all they have to do is tell me the correct word and whoever says it first wins the point. So then, you know, what is that word? That's dab. And every time I'm like, this is baggage. And they're like, you have the answers on the back. I'm like, no, 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 no. This says property of David Schoen on every card because he got <laughs> stamp crazy. But um, no, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's how good you have to be, you know. This is gagged, you know, this is dab. So, and I have some who are like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then some are like, D -d 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 and some have to write it on the board, you know, what they're doing. And, and I, the first time we play this, I let them, you know, write, okay, that's a D, that's an A, okay, that's a B, okay. And then somebody will steal to be like, oh, dab. And I'm like, I just said whoever said it first. If you want to cheat and look at your friend, that's up to you. I would do it in your head, but it's up to you. So it's a really fun game we play because they're all like, oh, I want to know, I want to know it. And then some of them will start reading it um, down, so they'll write E D E D E D E D, and the best part was when they're when I like cafes on here, and they're like cafe, cafe, ca and they're like it's cafe. Oh right, right, cafe. You know, like somebody says it right. So it's just really a fun game. That is for note recognition. We have these new things we just got. Uh, we have these things called boom wipers, which are big plastic tubes that are colored these dots, 
And so we'll put these on the board and have all the C's play and then have all the E's play and then it really works really well and they stick to the whiteboard. Um, that's all I got, any questions? Yes? When you start an instrument like violin or the ukulele, all the class, each child has that instrument at the same time? Yes, or we have a class set of everything. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we have a class set. Yeah, we have 25 ukuleles that we have. And, and the violins are different because it's on the size of your arm, so we measure for it. We have um, five eighths of a size, which is the tiny, tiny ones, and then it goes all the way up. So that's why. So mine is mine is a full size, and then I, that's why I brought this one. This is a half size. So I mean, they they are the, they, they have the same notes. It just has shorter strings, but they play the same notes. They're all pretty much in tune all the time, um, except when the air conditioning goes off over the weekend. Uh, but uh, so we have like 15 half sizes, and then we have a three quarter size, and then we have a couple full sizes, and we have a quarter size, and now we have an eighth size. So we've got, I think on that wall, I think we have 25 violins, and then bows and all that. Um, and again, that's a thanks to the PTC and Mr. Kelly. I just said, can we do violins to Miss Corbett? And they said, sure. Same with, same with ukuleles. I said, can we do ukuleles? Sure. <laughs> We're very, very blessed here. Yes, so. yes. Yeah. Can they um, catch up if they're... Sure. Yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. Okay. And, and, if, and I, I'm available. Mostly after school, I do groups every day after school, but I'm also available after school. And and like I said, this app is we're looking at getting it for some some students as well. Um, so yeah, no, it, no, I'm not worried about them at all. Um, they'll catch up quite quickly. Yeah. Oh, maybe you probably won't catch it. Fourth grade, we don't touch the violin as much because that group didn't. I started that three years ago, so I think the third graders hit it. The fourth graders didn't get it. No. Yes. What do you recommend as maybe two or three different options for starter instruments? I think people tend to go piano first right. a lot of times. So what I, sorry, what I tell people? No, I was just going to say also, is there a difference between maybe a kid that's got better fine motor skills versus one that? Uh huh. And what? So what I tell people, this is kind of it's, it makes sense after you hear it, but starting the piano. Let's see, starting the piano is. It's harder to, uh, hold on. It's backwards, so I'm trying to think. Guitar, it's harder to start the guitar because it hurts your fingers. But once you learn all that, it's much easier to get really good. The piano is the opposite. It's really easy to start the piano, but it's really hard to get really good. It, like, it just, it works, but it's so easy to get those little fingers going, and you don't have, like, everybody here could go play a piano right now, even though they didn't know anything. Everybody here couldn't play guitar because they'd have to push this down and go like this. So it's not very fine motor. I do say that ukulele is easier. And the reason it's easier is because those are nylon strings, so it doesn't hurt as much. And when they, like, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Gray came to me and she was like, I think I want to play the ukulele because the guitar is so hard. You've got to learn all these intricate chords. I was like, well, this is a chord and this is a chord. On the guitar, it's like, how do I get this? You know, just to play like Amazing Grace is like, and then you've got to like switch and switch and switch. I remember trying to do it when I was in high school. I was like, this is terrible. And it's on steel strings and it hurts and can bleed and it's not fun. And the guitar is so much bigger, even a child one. That's ukulele. This is actually, they use a smaller size. This is a tenor ukulele. They use a soprano one, so it's even smaller. My fingers don't work on that one. Um, but that's a C, it's an A, and they can play notes much easier. Um, but I, t 10 times out of 10, would say the piano. I started the piano when I was four. I did, uh, I had, I did Suzuki and I, I couldn't stand it, but, and I cried until I was in third grade having to do it. But after third grade, I kind of found a love for it. And, and, and I had, and I had a teacher that didn't give stickers and didn't, w wasn't warm fuzzy at all. And that worked for me, but my sisters had the sticker people. And I was like, well, why don't I get the stickers? But I, I didn't have that lady. I had the more, uh, rigorous lady. Um, but we, so we did scales all the time we did. And that's what I would tell if I was teaching a kid now, I would say, work on your scales, work on your chords. That's what's gonna get. That's what. That's how you're gonna get better. And and, and it's tough now because kids obviously want now, 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 now. And music isn't that way. Like it's just it's still old school, and you still have to put in the hours. Like I like I practiced eight hours a day, literally in, in, in addition to class. Like I was in there with a the snare drum for four hours with headphone ear plugs in, just playing, just to get my hands used to what they were supposed to be doing. Um, so you have to put in the time. And when we get, do the recorders, I tell the kids, can you just give me 12 minutes? Just 12 minutes, actual minutes of work, not, oh, I'm gonna go get a drink, I'm gonna go potty, I'm gonna go do this. Actually 12 minutes a day of working on 
getting the getting the airflow, getting getting it all together. If you can give me twelve minutes, that's all I want. And so then that's what I, the piano teachers are more like thirty, you know, like whatever. But I try, you know, if you can give me an actual twelve minutes of work, maybe there's three minutes here, three minutes here, three minutes there, then that's what I like. I think that's really will will get them. So so long story short, piano is absolutely the way to go. And most and all of our piano teachers, I would say, are phenomenal. They're all and and if you can't. Our studio is packed, so if you can't get in at the time you want, they'll teach you at, at home. They'll teach you at Rise. Uh, so I would absolutely, all those, all those teachers are really well, really good. And if you don't like any of them, I got other ones that are that are working. Yeah. Piano. Um, if they get, my son has been, you know, learned piano for almost three years. Mm -hmm. Recently, he gets so frustrated. So it's it should be quick or take a break or you know choose something else. So I got frustrated. Like I said, until third grade, um, and so sometimes it's better. Like, like I have three teachers here who who would take that on and say, I have one teacher here who would who would have him write a song, and and kind of take out the monotony of, of learning Bach and learning Beethoven and say, what if we learned it, looked at it this way in like a pop side and said, can you learn a Coldplay song or can you learn can you write your own chords and then come up with a melody and come up with this because that's theory above and beyond. Uh, that's what I would do. Now, I, some teachers are very like, no, you must do this, and that's how I grew up. You know, must do this, and I had had tears, and I, I didn't want to practice, and, and all that. Um, I would probably try to find a different teacher that wanted to make it more fun. I, I quit in eighth grade, and then I went and took church organ lessons because I because I thought it would be, and it, and it did. Like you get to learn with your feet, and you get to like play these huge loud sounds. So then I did that for like three years. And then I found a jazz piano teacher and he taught me a different way. So I found different avenues. And then I, I was taking percussion lessons at the time. So there were different ways for me to get the music that I needed. Um, Cause I got frustrated too. I just, I was like, now I love classical music. But back then I was like, I don't care about Bach again. Like I've just learned this song and, and there's so many black notes up there. I don't really want to do all this. Um, so it's kind of just finding a different, and I, and I know he's really good at, at the recorder. So maybe I can give him more recorder stuff that he's like, oh, I, I like this again. Um, so it's just kind of finding music different avenues and, and how you get to it. And that's one reason I really like Classical Countdown, because it doesn't take anything to do it. You can just listen and, and enjoy and find music kind of in a different way. We had one, I was telling the Vivaldi story, we, last, last week we did a lesson about Vivaldi. There's another guy on uh, Classical Countdown called Max Richter, and he took Vivaldi's Four Seasons and made, turned them on their head and made them sound like a movie soundtrack, but they still sound like the Four Seasons. And so we were playing that and I had a kid who just came in again was like, oh, that's Max Richter. I don't listen to Classical Countdown anymore, but my family loves him because of that, so that's all we listen to. And he, like, he's written soundtracks and all this stuff, but it's really cool to like compare and contrast, like, okay, he took this, it was kind of boring then, now it sounds like this, but it's still the same, you know, it's still the same bass. Um, so that's, that would be my suggestion. Is there anyone? No? Okay. Um, do you know if you have to have so much memory in your phone to just keep it to your car? Uh, for Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify, if you pay for it, um, you can just use data, okay. or you can um, you can download each playlist if you want. Okay. Uh, that's what I use, now I have unlimited data, so I just feel like I should use unlimited data, but you can also download each playlist and then you know delete okay. it and then download again. Um, Apple Music, I don't know, my wife uses that. I do it for all of you to, to use, but I don't. So on Quaver, I will email you. Uh, your class has a separate code. Um, yeah, I will email that to you. I think I put it on the fourth grade page. I haven't put it on the rest of the pages. And on that site, so you can't watch any of these fun videos. You can't actually watch anything I teach. But there are lots of games and just a ton of information on that. And they get to create their own little dude. And they can like make their dude look awesome. And uh, like Mr. Rose Dude has a guitar. We can't see him right now because this is not flash based, but on a flash based one, it has all that. Um, and that, like I said, they can earn bucks to like play games, I think. I, I have not. In fourth grade, we use it because they write a rap in fourth grade. And so we actually use a lot of the Quaver tools to write that rap. And so they log on and do all that stuff at the end of the year, maybe. Um, fourth grade, they're doing a musical this year, so 101 Dalmatians. So they're probably spending more of their time on that and less on the rap. On, the, on your table, you have some little cards. Um, those are, um, we, we have this room till 9.30, so 
you, you, I want you to have more coffee, chat with each other. If you have questions uh, for Mr. Rowe or for myself, um, write them down in those cards and, you, and I'll sort of pick them up and we can try and answer them for you before 9.30 or get back to you if you put your name on the, the question that you have. 